I'll go ahead and make the other three are still clear. I'm like, yes. Well, today we had the opportunity to exercise all of our garrison functions here at Fort Rucker. So that included our Department of Public Safety, our Department of Public Works, all of our units, and, uh, and a lot of the, the services that we provide to service members and family members on post. Exercises like this are, are, are really important. We are often um, really consumed with our day-to-day -day mission. That's the most important thing we do on Fort Rucker is train aviators. So everything that the garrison does really is focused on supporting that mission. So um, we don't often get a chance to do some of these things that are, are these you know, very rare but potentially catastrophic events um, like an active shooter or a hurricane or you know, some sort of uh, disaster. We really need to be prepared to react to one of those situations as well. So exercises like this gives, give us an opportunity to sort of step back and, uh, and work out some of, those, uh, some of those things that we need to do in case of an emergency. So really this gets down to uh, emergency preparedness for the garrison. Local organizations uh, that we work with, that it not only increases our capability, but more importantly, it ties us together as a community. Fort Rucker doesn't exist in, on an island. We, we exist here um, in close cooperation uh, with our local communities. We couldn't do what we do without them. And frankly, those local communities can't, uh, couldn't do what they do without Fort Rucker. Um, many, many of our family members and service members live in the local communities. We have mutual aid agreements between our law enforcement. Uh, in fact, just last week, we sent one of our fire trucks to respond to a house fire in Daleville. So our communities are inextricably linked and we really depend on each other. This exercise was a, a great demonstration of that. So we were demonstrating an incident that we were responding to on post but um, we really relied on our local community to help us respond to that. Our first responders were extremely professional in how they contained the immediate incident, but we had sheriffs and sheriff's deputies from Dale County responding in. We had other, uh, we notified all our local communities, and when we had our simulated casualties, all of our local communities participated by sending ambulances, local hospitals participated to take our casualties, and so really this exercise was, a, was a, a, a huge cooperation for the whole community and the whole group. So it was, it was really good. I, I appreciate the effort that everyone uh, gave. This was something that our commanding general, General Francis, decided to take way up uh, from a normal exercise and uh, gain, gain the participation of all of the, the tenant units and installations on post. So this is really a team effort across all of Fort Rucker, including um, like the post office and our local Dodia school, everybody participated. Uh, so not only was, did it make the exercise more realistic, but it allowed everybody to see um, how we all fit together and how it's really, uh, really one community. So our communities helped, our local partners, we even had um, National Guard units come down to, to help participate. The CG's top three priorities were to protect our people, protect our mission, and protect the local community. So as we talk about the, the training objectives that we were getting after for this exercise, really we knocked out all three. So the immediate response to the incident was protecting our people. And our people really means our soldiers, our family members, all of our civilians on post. So we had our, our law enforcement respond immediately and that protected our people, our people on post. His second priority was protecting our mission. So once we contained the incident, uh, we were doing all of the analysis. How do we protect that mission of training aviators? Does the, do the outside stage fields, do we need to curtail the flight mission? Do we have to clear out our classrooms or lock down our classrooms? All of those decisions were part of the exercise as well. So um, in the immediacy of the exercise, we protected our mission by uh, making sure that we didn't impact that. But in the long run as well, by building a more resilient garrison, we're also protecting the mission in the long run so that we know that if there isn't a, a natural or man-made uh, hazard here, 
we know that we can protect our mission and continue to train aviators. Finally, on protecting the community, the, uh, the exercise really showed how what we do here on, here on Fort Rucker affects the local community and vice versa, and that by handling an incident like we did today, we know we're protecting our local community. The, the simulation of a chemical device right, right now, had that been able to go off and we weren't able to interdict it, that certainly could have affected the local community. Um, there's plenty of people that live in the local community that work on Fort Rucker as well. So there's lots of connections and lots of, uh, lots of ties between Fort Rucker and the community. So by working these exercises and practicing responding to incidents, we're certainly also protecting the local community as well. So really by doing this one exercise, we were able to get at all of the CG's priorities for that. So it was, it was very effective.